Hey everyone, my name is DIY Biotech and I have a problem. Well, I've got a lot of problems, but let's just take them one at a time. When I'm home brewing or running fermentations, I need a way to find out how many cells are in the culture or how active the culture is. Now there are a few different options here. Of course, I could take a sample of the cells, put them on a microscope slide, look under the microscope and count individually how many cells are in a certain area and then multiply that to understand how many cells are in the entire culture. However, this is really time consuming and if I need to take two samples a day, for example, that would be a, a, a large pain. Another method that I could use is put a little bit of the culture on a Petri dish, spread it out evenly, let it grow overnight, take it out of the incubator, count all of the colonies on the Petri dish, and then multiply that to figure out how many cells were in that original solution that I put in the Petri dish. Of course, this is even more time consuming and you have to wait an entire day and hope that your cell counts work out properly. So the slightly less accurate solution to measuring our solutions is to use something called an optical density meter. This is a really simple device and all it does is pass light through a sample with a little sensor on the other side that tells you how much light passed through the sample. The cheapest one that I could find from Jeff Bezos was about $300 and I was not prepared to pay $300 for an optical density meter. So I've built this one, which you can put together probably for less than $20. This one happens to have a 3D printed case, but you could build it out of a cardboard box if you really wanted to. So the model that I designed is really simple. It's got a little lid here that lifts off. It's got a slot for the cuvette. This is a quartz cuvette in this case. So if you're looking for cuvettes, the really cheap ones are gonna be plastic. However, plastic is opaque to UV light. So if you're measuring anything in the UV spectrum, you can't use plastic. You have to use a quartz cuvette, which is much more expensive. But to be fair, plastic cuvettes are only like 10 cents each or something like that. So quartz cuvettes, relatively expensive. On one side of the optical density reader, we have a LED. In this case, I'm using a red LED. And on the other side of the optical density meter, we have a photoresistor. Both of these electronic components are really, really cheap. So this cuvette slots in nicely. The LED is being powered by this power supply. I found that 3.7 volts is actually best. I think these LEDs are supposed to run on about 3.3 volts, but you might need to play around with the voltage to figure out what works best for your build. On the detector side of things, again, we have this photoresistor with a pull-up resistor. The pull-up resistor is important. You can look up these circuits on online. And then it, that is connected to a knockoff Arduino Uno. Uh, I have the pull-up resistor plugged into the A0 of the Arduino, and then it's being powered by ground and VCC. If you've never worked with Arduino before, I would say that this is an excellent project to get started on. It's literally one sensor. You can also power the LED with the Arduino as well and have it all in one unit. And so the idea here is I'm just taking a, a moving average of, of the photoresistor reading. Uh, it's on pin uh, A0. So here's A0 here, and I'm taking 10,000 readings uh, and averaging them together and then printing on the, the serial monitor. So you can see here on the serial monitor, we have readings coming in. So with analog inputs, your range is zero to 1023. Additionally, you could add things like a little display to the Arduino so that you can see the readout on a separate display rather than having to plug in a laptop. A few things to look out for when you're building this is to make sure that everything is light tight. So if there's light leaking in, that's not a good thing. And so that's why I've designed this lid and that's why I spray painted the whole thing this dark green. That's the darkest spray paint I had, but it, it works pretty good. It, it keeps the light out efficiently enough for me. The next thing to look out for is the wavelength of LED that you're using. So in this case, I'm using a red LED, which is around 675 nanometers. Most yeast and bacteria cultures in labs are measured at OD600, meaning 600 nanometers. So if you're growing yeast or bacteria, you probably want to use that. If you're growing other organisms, you may want to use a different wavelength. And if you're searching for a particular compound or 
something that changes color depending on how much is in solution, you may want to use a different wavelength depending on that. So it's a really versatile tool in that way. So how does this little thing work? You know, it costs almost nothing to put together. Does it actually read the optical density of solutions in a decently accurate way? So in order to test this, what I did is I grew a 48 hour culture of uh, yeast that I happen to have laying around on a Petri dish. This is yeast that I isolated from kefir. You can see that in a previous video if you'd like. I grew the culture on just brown sugar and water. The mini bioreactor that I was using, I'll talk about that more in a future video, was autoclaved in a little pressure cooker. You can see it up on the shelf up there. After about 48 hours of growth, I could tell that the culture was pretty dense cellularly, and so I stopped it in order to measure the optical density. I also took some measurements during the fermentation process. Now, in order to calibrate the device, what I did is I took the maximum cell density, so the end point of the fermentation, diluted it to several different dilutions, and then measured each of the solutions in the optical density reader. The reason this works well is because we know that at the end of the fermentation, it will have, we'll say, 100% cell density. If we dilute what we call 100% cell density by half, then we know we have 50% of our maximum cell density, and so on and so forth. We can perform several dilutions, and then if we plug all of our numbers into Excel, we can see that we generate a beautiful little curve uh, with a decent R-squared value. So now what we can do is, since we measured the optical density during the fermentation, we can now go back and calculate what our optical density actually was relative to our 100% in fermentation that we set. So that's the basic idea of how we can calibrate an optical density meter. However, there is one thing that you need to make sure that you do, and that is you need to zero it every single time you use it. So when you go and take a measure of your fermentation, you need to first measure a cuvette full of just plain water. So since we're trying to measure how much stuff is in our solution, our baseline is going to be a solution with nothing in it. So by measuring the water cuvette and subtracting that reading from the reading with your solution, then you get sort of an absolute reading. And those absolute readings are what we want to graph, and those absolute readings are what we want to use to measure our solutions. I did notice a little bit of drift between the days of measuring the samples of plain water, and that's sort of to be expected. Of course, every condition of measuring isn't going to be perfect. This power supply isn't perfect, for example. The lighting in this garage isn't perfect, for example. So these things change. The important part is that you're measuring the difference between water and your solution. Hopefully that all made sense. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions for future videos, leave them in the comments section below. I've been DIY Biotech. Thanks for watching. Bye.